um, what we wanted to do and um, uh, is um, kind of um, challenge uh, five theses, and I'm not actually sure if they're in here. We've got actually more um, information on everyone in the slide deck. Um, but we wanted to cover kind of like five myths and, and um, uh, it's, it's more thesis um, on secondary cities. So the first one is, and, and I'm sure every one of you has a certain view to them, um, primary city products do not work in secondary cities. Um, the, the second one is a lack of profitability makes secondary cities too risky. Third one would be, and I think that's going to be quite exciting as well, um, are not liquid enough, you can't sell them. So it's great to have a hotel product there, but you just can't sell them. Um, eager to, to hear Andrea's view on it. Um, and then um, secondary cities are too small for institutional money. And the fifth one is uh, lack of options in primary markets push players into secondary cities. And this is kind of like, um, okay, I don't get anything in the big seven, so I go whatever to Nuremberg, Stuttgart, Essen, um, and so on and so on. <coughs> so these are the topics we wanted to challenge. And um, uh, what we did um, when we kind of like prepared the discussion is have a, have a small call on secondary cities and what the view is on secondary cities. And the exciting uh, bit about it is that, um, and that's why we kind of wanted to start with this, is every one of us thinks secondary cities are different. Um, <laughs> what is actually a secondary city. So um, uh, obviously Germany is very different from, for example, France and the UK with kind of like London or Paris. We've got a decentralized uh, structure in Germany. So that I think this is not a news really to anyone <laughs> sitting here, but I think it's important to understand when you compare it to, to different, um, different countries. Um, so, so what I would like to do is, um, maybe start off with um, kind of like what are your criteria when, when looking into secondary cities? What are the kind of like minimum overnight stays, total inhabitants? So we kind of like lay a common ground um, on what we actually see as a secondary city. Philip, you want to oh, yes. maybe cut off? Oh, yes. Uh, it's, it is, in a, it is two, two parts in a, in, it is for definition for security cities. But when we take the... Um, the seven biggest city in, 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 in Germany, if we spoke about Germany, um, you, get, you get the same figure uh, as, or the same, the same name as the first seven cities over four million overnights. Uh, except one is Dresden. Dresden is by the seven biggest overnight cities in, in Germany, and you, fi you don't find Frankfurt, Okay. In the in the first seven, and you find Frankfurt uh, with the with the other one. But um, when we took the uh, the four the, the, the four million cities, uh, over four million cities, you find at the first place uh, Berlin. Mm -hmm. Berlin with twenty nine million uh, overnight today, and um, it's it's going with uh, Munich, Hamburg, uh, Köln, Düsseldorf, Dresden. And Stuttgart, and um, for, for us, is the definition is, is primary cities are all the cities that I mentioned there, mm -hmm. and uh, is the second one is definitely over four, uh, under four million <coughs> overnights between I would say between one point five and four million overnights. I mean, it's a, it's a definition, the best definition for our business, for hotel business is the overnights and not the inhabitants. Yeah. Okay, so you, so you basically just focus on overnight stays predominantly yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then basically inhabitants is, is something where, you, where you're kind of like not looking so much. Yeah, it's okay. a secondary decision point. Yeah. Andreas, what, do you, what are you looking at? Yeah, I do, I do go along with Philip. That's, that's the official um, definition. definition. Yeah, so that, that's definitely right, but of course um, we may also look at other factors in this, in this respect. We look um, at each market, how um, regional market may be or how international on the other side it may be. Uh, what is the business leisure mix? Is there a good equilibrium between these two? So is the hotel being uh, well uh, occupied during the entire week? And I think basically it will be defined through um, active uh, sales and uh, purchases in the market. So. 
uh, there are certain markets like um, like Stuttgart and Dresden which have proved to be you know <coughs> quite uh, quite liquid in a way that that uh, more hotels have been traded than maybe in in one or the other secondary city in, in return. So that may be also a factor which is qualifi qualifying a, a primary city like in return. What would be what would be the the lower threshold where you would say anything below X overnight stays wouldn't make any sense. Uh, well, as as per definition, with the, the primary city starts more or less at four million uh, overnight. So, so these are the primary ones, and the secondary are from one and a half to four million. We uh, so far have been only concentrating with human investment on the primary cities. So we now also, and we will later on come to the reason for that, of course. Uh, we are now also concentrate on secondary cities. Okay. Um, and of course, look at each one very thoroughly. You know, what are the demand drivers, and, and what are the factors why, and the qualifications why we may also go in, in one or the other series. We may go into that um, in detail in the minute. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, Thorsten, how's Novum looking at it? Uh, we are a little bit more bullish, so we, we just need one million uh, overnights. Um, but uh, this is just the, one, the, the only figure, uh, well, not the only figure what we're looking at. So the secondly, we are looking what is the uh, complete environment in this area, and we're looking at uh, competitors. Uh, <coughs> Because um, um, when we have one million uh, overnights, but we just have 50 hotels, then we have a big chance uh, to, to penetrate this market again. So um, that's uh, quite similar to, to um, Philip. But, uh, uh, we're just looking at, at one million as one criteria, and the other one is uh, we're looking at the, the comp set again. Okay. But it doesn't mean we are, we are looking at today. I mean, we start with with a, with the primary cities. That was our focus, in, and the focus in, in Germany and also in uh, outside of Germany. But uh, today is really our interest to go in the secondary cities. Sure. But I would say in the what well, is to the third, near secondary, tertiary, tertiary cities. Yeah, tertiary, tertiary, yeah. tertiary cities. That's our target too. I mean, well, I mean, we are not focused. On a secondary or a, or a primary cities, yeah. Okay. We are not calling them secondary city or relocation. We we call it attractive or yeah. um, city or not. So, and uh, we we are operating 43 hotels right now, and we have um, six of them are in so-called B cities, and we are quite successful in these areas because um, we're penetrating the markets and uh, we have a good chance to improve this in secondary or tertiary cities. Yeah. And, and as Andreas said, we have. On our list, maybe 15 to, to 17 locations, yeah. which are interesting for us in Germany. About the definition again, I mean, well, in our, at the moment we say primary, secondary, tertiary city, but in our languages, in, in, in uh, real estate languages, we spoke about E, B, and C yeah. cities, a location. Yeah? That's perhaps, again, the same. Uh, so, 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 in a way, um, we, we need to think about the label as well um, and, and call it maybe B cities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> Claudio, um, from, from your international perspective and, and kind of like experience in, um, in other markets, kind of like Spain, Italy, um, how, how do you define secondary cities or B cities? Uh, well, actually, uh, we look at the very nice days. Uh, at the same time, we look at GDP. Uh, we look at the indu industrial tissue that is uh, around the cities. Uh, we look at, obviously, the number of people that are living in the cities because it's, uh, it's another important factor. And uh, um, between uh, uh, Germany, Italy, and Spain, uh, semantically, when we talk about secondary cities, we think uh, immediately to the number of, uh, um, of inhabitants that they uh, that are living over there. So uh, when we look at that, uh, actually, as uh, uh, my colleagues are saying, probably it's a, it's a little mistake because we have to look at interesting city from a, an overnight uh, point of view, overnight stays point of view. Um, the difference between uh, uh, Germany and uh, Italy and Spain uh, mostly are, uh, you know, the, the industrial tissue, uh, GDP. Actually, if you look at uh, Italy and Spain, uh, if, uh, secondary cities are much uh, less than in Germany. In Germany, there are more secondary cities because the, in terms of GDP, in Germany, GDP of secondary, what we call secondary cities, is higher. Um, than in Italy or, uh, or, um, or in Spain. Uh, and then again, if you look at the number of inhabitants, uh, again, it's very different because uh, uh, secondary cities, semantically speaking, in Italy and Spain are cities that are from uh, 200 
1,000 um, inhabitants to 500 at the maximum, with some exceptions. Uh, in Germany, uh, it's uh, from 500,000 to 1 million. So it's, uh, it's a, there is a little difference. Okay. So these are the, the things that we are, uh, surely we are considering when we are making a distinction between primary, secondary, and tertiary city. But again, uh, it's not uh, between primary, secondary, and tertiary. It's uh, location A, location B, and location C, as you were saying before. Mm. So um, uh, I think it's important to understand when we're talking about it, um, um, which cities do you currently cover and um, uh, where do you kind of like, where would you like to go? Um, I think, Torsten, you're in, in quite a few. Um, right. What are you currently, what's your footprint? Um, So-called B location, we are in Bremen, we are in Stuttgart, we are in Leipzig, we are in Dortmund, and um, which is also, uh, all of them are in the western part of Germany. Mm. So right now we're looking at, uh, except Leipzig of course, and um, now we are, we are looking for more in the south of Germany, we have okay. a lot of potential on this side, which are, as we said, uh, Augsburg, Nuremberg, uh, Freiburg, these are locations which we're looking for right now. Um, all of them are, or uh, except uh, Nuremberg, have uh, below one million um, mm -hmm. overnight. So, but actually, as we said, uh, we we think the market is quite interesting for us, and we would like to cover these these markets uh, as well. Uh, beside our uh, core portfolio, which is on the big seven, except Munich. Okay, Philip. <laughs> yeah, we we get today with the hotel, the existing hotel and the hotel under development um, the pipeline. We have roughly over seventy-five hotels and. I would say you have but in 50, Germany, no, no, yeah, 50, yeah. 50 in, in Germany. Oh, and sorry. when I take the, the list of, uh, of the cities in Germany, I mean, over 1 million <coughs> overnight, um, I can say we are presenting each one. I mean, you, we are present today also in city under 1 million. Of you, you mentioned Bremen, for example. Bremen is a city who has close to 1 million. That's why it's, it's a lot of city where we, we are present, but we, where we want to go today. And for us, it's not only focus on, on Berlin or Hamburg and Munich, but really also on this B and sometimes C, sometimes C, C cities. I mean, Bremen is, for our definition, a C cities, but is a, now I mean, it's under, under 1 million uh, overnight. As for, for us, under 1 million overnight is, so it's a sea city, but you would like to go in a way. We go, we go, we are, we are. You there are already, okay. Already there, mm -hmm. yeah. Which cities do you cover um, as well? You, you I mean, for example, yeah. Saarbrücken. Yeah? Oh, yeah, Saarbrücken is uh, is one city is not is not in on the top of the of uh, of the city in the in, in, in Germany, and uh, another one is Magdeburg, where we know Magdeburg. I mean, it's uh, is certainly a good a good example. Where we want to be also in, in other part of Germany. I mean, in Augsburg, you mentioned Augsburg, you yep. mentioned Nuremberg, you mentioned Freiburg, um, yeah, okay. that's all destination. I mean, we can say uh, today, Motel One could be, um, yeah, we can we can grow and grow in Germany also. No? Mm. Claudio, where uh, you've got a strong development pipeline, um, mm. where do you want to go? Well, actually, uh, SNH uh, uh, is uh, an international chain, as we were mentioning before. We are following our customers. We are mainly uh, driven by business customers, so we are following where they go. Uh, we are covering right now uh, six secondary cities in, uh, in Germany that we consider uh, six, uh, secondary cities. And uh, we have a plan of uh, adding another two or two, three, uh, just to follow our customers uh, because uh, our international customer, that, uh, for example, not to make uh, any name, but uh, no, for example, Accenture, uh, consulting companies, where they go normally, because we serve them, uh, we tend to be uh, with hotels where they go or with uh, other, let's say, big international companies. So right now we have a pipeline of uh, uh, four hotels uh, right now. Uh, two of them are in secondary cities and two of them are in primary cities. But the idea is, uh, again, to cover uh, most of the secondary cities in, in Germany because most of our customers are going into, the, into the, those cities. Which cities are on your wish list? If you, <coughs> just to, to name a couple maybe. <laughs> Well, actually, it's a long list. Uh, it's, a long list. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long list, actually. But uh, you know, we, uh, 
out of the 11 city that we consider uh, secondary asset, uh, we are covering six, and uh, we are we have plan of uh, another two. Uh, in the next couple of, uh, let's say, two years, we will have another two hotels in those secondary cities. We are talking about uh, uh, one is Bonn and the other one is Mainz, uh, which, in, in our opinion, are secondary city, very secondary city, but we have uh, a strong demand from uh, our business customers for those cities, so we have to follow where they, where they, where they tell us to go. Hmm. Rez, I'm not sure, do you have already something in secondary cities, or? Well, well or be locations? How, how, it depends on how, they, how you define the second university again. <laughs> so, Choose yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just to, to let, let you know, we, we've all got uh, 43 hotels with uni investment in the entire exposure of 2.3 billion euros in hotel real estate. So we historically, of course, have been always looking at the at the at the major cities in within within Germany, so we are very well allocated in Hamburg and Berlin and, and Munich, for instance. Um, it depends on how you define secondary cities. We we do have a hotel in, in Dresden, the Hotel Express, mm -hmm. so that one may define it as a secondary city as well as Stuttgart. So I talked to some people from Stuttgart yesterday. It's big seven. They were not very happy that I would be saying. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, it may be, may be the case, but Stuttgart definitely is a very strong market, so it definitely has been making a lot of sense investing there in the early stage. Um, are you happy with Dresden? Yeah, we are very happy okay. with Dresden. Yeah, with Dresden, that, I think that, that counts for all secondary cities, but also for Dresden. Okay. Micro location is key here. We, the Holiday Express is, is sitting in the very center of Dresden. Okay. If you're going a bit outside into fringe areas that may be more difficult. So that is, I'm anticipating the next question about that. That's, of course, one of the mm -hmm. most key driving factors that if we go into secondary cities, we need to have size, we need to have the micro location. So these are definitely one of the factors which are, which are definitely key. And at the moment, we are, we are also looking at secondary cities in, in, um, in Germany. If I may borrow your list, Philip, <laughs> it is here in the whole tour report. It says Stuttgart, Nuremberg, Leipzig, Hannover, Rostock, and Bremen. So these will, would be definitely on the list. We will be happy to have a look at these. Always in a good location, micro location, but maybe also here defined as tertiary markets could be of interest. There are even tertiary markets which may have a, a higher ref par even than primary markets in Germany, which is quite surprising. Look at Wiesbaden, look at, at Heidelberg and Bad Baden. So there are some small um, small cities which are real jewels within the German um, investment investment market. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's actually a, a good point to, to discuss because now we're kind of like um, been very uh, at ease with our questions. Everybody could say a little bit about what they like, what they don't like, and um, uh, and, and maybe now it's uh, to get some skin on the ga um, on the bone. It's um, uh, I, I think in the end of the day we we, we are we want to make profitable hotels, and uh, so I think it would be would be good to understand um, when you compare. Your, your kind of like top line and even bottom line, how is kind of like Stuttgart, Dresden, Leipzig, the, the B cities, comparing to um, primary cities with regards to ADR, um, occupancy, and even GOP levels. Are GOP levels higher or lower? Um, is labor cheaper? The first thing is, is, is a price. I mean, I mean, the price for a, for a, for a square meters of price for a property in uh, Munich is another price as in Bremen. And but that, is, is, sorry for, for interrupting. I, um, that, that would be actually the next point because if no, if, I mean, <laughs> if the, price, the calculation begin with that point. When we are when we are taking a decision for a, for a, for a, for a location for a, for a hotel. Um, it's always a question, okay, it's not only the GOP. We know the GOP is working in, 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 uh, in, in, in Munich, uh, uh, perhaps a uh, little different as in, uh, okay. as in um, Saarbrücken. Well, in reality is labor price is, is, is expensive in Munich. It's difficult to find in Munich as in, in Saarbrücken. 
um, you get you get also uh, perhaps uh, the all the, uh, the the structures in in, in in the in the small in the small city are perhaps easier to find. Is it perhaps also the construction company is easier, easier to find? But um, we, we for, for us our GOP and it perhaps is, it means something for you. Our GOP between all the hotels we have is by roughly 55 percent, and we don't see any big difference between and Saarbrücken and and Munich. Okay. And for us, it's very important to to keep that in the mind. And for and for for us again is is a key of the decision to go on a location is. Is a, is a finance cost, and that's why I'm looking on, the, on your side. While it's sure that we get, and that's the reality, we get another price. I mean, to 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 for 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 a plot in in, in Munich as in uh, Magdeburg, and you get another hill in Munich as in Saarbrücken, mm -hmm. and perhaps that will be will be good to hear again um, if in 2015 is also the the opinion do you have that perhaps the primary cities get a better yield as the secondary and the tertiary cities? Well, it's a key of the result. I mean, GOP is one point of the result, but we have to go down. Yeah, we, we could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can we can we can basically take it take it a step further, may, maybe a little later on. Um, if if the financial results are the same in, for example, Stuttgart and uh, Berlin, to take it to extreme, um, it's probably cheaper to buy a plot of land in Stuttgart than in Berlin, and the overall calculation could be more um, That's beneficial. Your That's your opinion. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to see the reality. Where I'm, when, when you look for the prime location in Berlin and the prime location in Stuttgart, um, why well, it's not a big difference? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Torsten, um, uh, what do you what do you think from an operator point of view? Um, how are your? Um, uh, we we cannot see a big lack of performance hosting in, in B locations or C locations. So, um, fully agree with you um, that the GOP is nearly was quite similar. Okay. Uh, but actually, this was a good example. So, we, from our point of view, we would like to expand in Stuttgart uh, very massively. So we can we can see there are five to six hotels on our side. Uh, against nine in Berlin right now in our portfolio, but uh, we would like to go in Stuttgart for another hotel because uh, the profitability is uh, much more higher than in, uh, in Berlin, for example. So, but uh, it depends on the micro location. So, um, there's a lot of things in the market when when you talk about Stuttgart right now. Uh, but then, when we go in secondary cities, we would like to go in, in a locations in the city center. Um, and there's a lot of things in the outskirts of Stuttgart, and we are not looking for because then we have, um, of course, um, some problems in the profitability. Um, but again, um, the, from the performance side, we can see a lag. It just just kind of like. From from a from a kind of like figure point of view, what what kind of ref bar difference do you have in your primary cities compared to your B cities? Uh, it depends on again on the definition. So when we compare uh, Berlin, for example, with with Stuttgart, we have a much more higher ref bar in Stuttgart than in Berlin. Uh, than in Berlin. Okay, course. and if um, you compare Hamburg, for example, uh, maybe we take yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, Hamburg it's a little bit better performing than Stuttgart, of course. But uh, when you compare, uh, for example, Hamburg and Leipzig, then you can see a lack of um, ADRs, uh, of course. Okay. Um, but uh, then we are going to the GOP, going to the labor costs, and going to the below the GOP where we have uh, risk-adjusted leases, mm -hmm. and and we have the same uh, profitability, or we try to have the same profitability than in a location. So. Okay. As we adjust the leases, of course, in Leipzig, we are not paying the spend what we would like to pay in Hamburg. Andreas, what do you think on performance? You've already said a couple of points to it from an investor's point of view. How do you look at it and how, how do you view the, the situation? On the performance, I, I think it really depends on, on which, which micro location you're, you're looking at. So there may be definitely. Yes. As you pointed out, uh, Stuttgart may be, may be much stronger than Berlin, so it, it really depends for us. Which is, uh, uh, another factor is, is, is much more of importance. Of course, we are not we are in the first place. Of course, we look at, at the operational results, but then we, of course, from our end, are looking on the coverage on the lease. So at the end of the day, it all comes to the level what it will be the lease level itself, and what's the coverage on the lease. So 
could be, you know, a very bad uh, over-rented hotel in either in a primary or in a secondary city. It all depends on the, on the on the on the level of lease. What is important to us all in all now in our strategy is we have been only concentrating so far in primary cities, and as you all know, there is a big new compassion on these markets. There is a lot. Of um, international also coming from outside of Europe, influx into Germany and also other European countries, which uh, puts us in a situation and how we how may we deal with this matter. So there is of course a strategy that we're trying to do, structure, actively structure off market deals and trying to do, um, uh, yeah, maybe um, this unorthodox um, acquisition and deal structure proposal. Um, approach, but on the other hand, of course, the other way would be to look at secondary cities. And then here we, we come to the next point. Um, if we have bought a hotel in secondary city, um, is this market liquid? May we resell that hotel at a certain point of time? And just imagine at, the, at this point of time we're in a, in, a, in a high point of the cycle. But we also have to consider, you know, a sales, a point of sale in a maybe not that high level where, where the market may be less liquid, so this is like a, like two points which we have to navigate ourselves in between. So we have to thoroughly analyze the, the secondary city and see um, if that will meet our requirements also for the long term and with regards to operational uh, sustainability. And then we are coming back to your point. Um, operational results that may be high, may be lower. I think the sustainability of the results is important. Yeah. Is that is that emotion in, in in your healed strategy? I mean, I will say emotion between 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 uh, 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 Munich and uh, and uh, and the brain. Emotionally, with three hands too. Sorry, didn't get. I, I mean, uh, emotion in in in, in the in, in, in the factors. I mean, is it is that Berlin more emotion for you investors? That means are they want to be in Berlin? They they, they 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 pay more for Berlin as for for Britain. I think it's always a risk allocation approach. So we are of course prepared to higher to pay a lower yield in Munich or <coughs> maybe also in Berlin rather than in um, in, um, in the secondary cities. <coughs> it also depends on the funds. Some funds they are asking for high yields. Then we have to be a bit more flexible than with location. We always try to keep out the emotions as much as we can and then, you know, try to serve our customers, our investors and see, you know, what is the appropriate market for each fund. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, th I think b before we come to the to the point of, um, and we're trying to kind of like work our way down from, from kind of like the operating factors to the, to the financial factors, um, uh, I think it would be uh, good to understand what kind of like value brings an international brand compared to more maybe a German brand um, and um, kind of like to be very pushy on that, uh, do you actually need an international brand <coughs> in, in a secondary city or are you maybe better off with a German brand? Claudio, maybe uh, <laughs> you, you want to? <laughs> no, we are very emotional when we... How comes it? We are not German, we are emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, well, actually, uh, it has been mentioned several times, but uh, secondary cities, when we make a, a decision for a secondary city, we look for, uh, within the city, the best location. Because if you look uh, uh, elsewhere from the best location, actually we'll be in trouble, as Andreas was saying. Uh, at the end, uh, uh, investors want to see a return, and uh, if you are in a location, normally uh, you can see returns. Even uh, uh, if the market collapses or whatever, if you are in very good location, uh, at the end uh, uh, you can you can see the, the hotel that is working pretty well because there is demand in the city. Um, that is different from uh, primary cities, also because primary cities you can go uh, elsewhere and look for other opportunities because there is a lot of demand for primary cities. <coughs> so the returns at the end, uh, even if you are not in any location because the location is too expensive for you. Uh, and you, you have to look, as Philip saying, uh, you have to look for other locations which are not really a location. Uh, but Claudio, um, uh, do I need an NH brand if I go to a secondary B 
specificity, or do you think? Uh, International, uh, international brands, what they are bringing are standards. Okay. So if you are an international traveler or if you are uh, a traveler that is used to, uh, to travel a lot for work or for pleasure, normally you are looking for standards. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, go, if you are going to an NH hotel, you always know what you are expecting. Uh, okay. If you are going to, uh, let's say, a, a local chain uh, or a local uh, hotel, you you never know. Or uh, now it's uh, it probably it's, uh, easier with TripAdvisor, or uh, you can see the rooms before. But uh, you never know what you are going to uh, to find when you are going to a local hotel. That is the, the main difference. Um, what, what I what I want to get get at, and, and I'm sure Torsten and Philip are, are going to say that they have got standards as well. Um, um, <laughs> um, uh, the, 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 the question is kind of like how much, how important is it? And, and I think there's a reason to it, um, to, to have benefits, to have an international reservation system, to have your kind of like international footprint. Um, but generally spoken, um, I think the uh, uh, market, and I, I, I'm not going to speak about Stuttgart anymore because, uh, because I think we've stressed that enough. So maybe go for Essen. Um, if you go to Essen, <laughs> um, uh, it might be nice to have um, an international brand, or how do you see that from your maybe even experience? If you, for example, um, if you are, have an operation in Valencia, or if you go in a, in a B city in, in Italy. Uh, well, uh, as you said before, uh, when we when we enter a secondary city, uh, obviously the value added of the brand uh, is that we bring all the customers from our international uh, um, countries, that we are in 28 countries, so we can, we can bring there more customers than a local chain. Uh, we tend to operate as, uh, uh, as NH, we tend to operate as uh, local in the sense that uh, when uh, we are in a, in a country, uh, we tend to expand within the country uh, also in secondary city because we want to be seen, especially in Germany, as a local chain uh, from our uh, local customers. Especially in Germany, there are a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, let's say, companies that are very important uh, that are mainly based in Germany. So they are looking for, uh, let's say, a, a global net of hotels in Germany. So when we talk with uh, uh, local companies that need hotels all around Germany, we, we tend to actually listen to them and when we decide where to go. So again, we listen to our customers, not just the international customers, but uh, especially in Germany, we also listen to the local customer that, has, uh, you, that needs uh, a local net of, uh, okay. network of hotels and uh, that adds a lot of value to, to them. Mm. Andreas, how do, you, how do you see that when you, when a, for example, the developer comes to you and says like, I've got this super funky plot um, in Essen um, and uh, I don't know yet which operator is going to do it, but most likely it's going to be a German or an international operator. How would that swing the needle for you? Would you actually buy anything with a, with a local operator? Mm -hmm. Just a question for you, Philip. Are you German or international? <laughs> <laughs> so well. <laughs> European. Yeah. Oh, European, okay. Um, I, I tend, it's not an absolute statement, but I tend to go for international, including one to one, of course. <laughs> and I, I very much favor also exactly what is about Claudio said, the, the global appro approach to really combine the strength, of course, of maybe a local um, GM and knowing the area and playing all the clavier tour of the advantages of the region. And then, of course, bringing also the international guests into the hotel to really optimize that. And at the other end of the day, uh, this hotel under international brand with a, with a certain size would also be um, helping me overcoming my, um, my concerns with regards to liquidity. So an international branded hotel, just imagine you stay with Essen or, or Dortmund or whatever city, Freiburg, with 200 rooms, 250 rooms would be definitely a hotel which I may sell on at a, at a certain point of time. Okay. Um, so, so, Torsten, go for German operator. <laughs> uh, Why do you need an international one, or do you need an international one? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> um, 
sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it depends on the size of the hotel. Okay. For the um, first aspect, so we are we are below the the normal corporate radar. Um, so we are operating hotels between 75 and 150 keys. Mm. And um, as I said, when we are going to the B city, we are hopefully in the best location. And then um, uh, traditionally, we are very strong with yield and revenue management, and we have all the corporate structure in place in, in Germany and in Hamburg centralized. So we're acting like an international brand, but we're not paying the fees for an international brand. Mm -hmm. And actually, we don't need it um, because we have um, good demand on, on these properties and uh, good occupancy rates. Um, so uh, actually, um, but, but the other, on the other hand, uh, we, have, we still have the problem as Andreas said and pointed out. Um, sure, we are pitching for developments in Essen or in Stuttgart, sorry, uh, no, <laughs> and in Augsburg, for example. And um, <coughs> it's always the same question that uh, when, when it comes to, to the question, how can we manage the exit? Um, you are a local player in Germany, you have 43 hotels, but you don't have an, a franchise on it. And mm -hmm. we said, okay, we, we don't need it, so we have, uh, uh, 80, 85 percent occupancy in Stuttgart. Why, why should we take and franchise on it and pay the fee for it? Um, so it's always the question. But then we have a lack of, of um, then that we can cannot structure the exit because uh, inter international institutional investors would like to have it, uh, which I can understand. But uh, from the performance side, as I said, we cannot see a lack on this. Uh, so okay. we don't need an international brand in, in our hotels. When you um, when you look at your source markets. Do you know, um, out of the top of your head, roughly how many are not German guests in your hotel? Yes, sure. Would you like to share that? <laughs> <laughs> roughly? It, 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 yeah, it, it depends on the location, of okay. course. Uh, but, but roughly it's 25%. It's okay. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, well, I, I, agree, your side, yeah. I, I agree with the retorsion partially. Uh, because actually, if you look at the nature, actually we have uh, almost 60 hotels in Germany. So we are really an international brand in Germany or we are more a local brand okay. in Germany. So that is the value added that Andreas was saying. Uh, when it is true that you are bringing an international chain, its first hotel in Germany, a secondary city, the value added is almost zero. I uh -huh. totally agree with that. But uh, if you are already in the main cities in Germany, you have already a network of hotels in Germany, uh, as NHS, NH can keep growing in general because I see more as a local operator rather than an international operator. Because we have more hotels than a local operator. So that is the value added of, uh, of NH in this case because it's real reliability, as Andrea was saying, liquidity when you are trying to sell the, the asset because there is a guarantee be behind, which is our international group. <coughs> And we are running the hotels uh, with the same or better performances of local operators, which in some cases are not able to run uh, hotels that are more than 100 rooms. Because when uh, the hotels is becoming bigger and bigger, then uh, you feel uh, actually uh, the constraint of filling the hotel every day, and you have to add many things, and you need an international brand to fill the hotel. How do you, how do you adapt your product when you go into a B-city? Well, uh, we tend to adapt the product depending on the location. Uh, we, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, instead of uh, having the full spectrum of services, we tend to review the services okay. uh, because actually there is less need uh, to differentiate because if you are in a new location in a secondary city, mm -hmm. people tend to go there instead of in the surrounding. If you are in a secondary city, you want to stay in downtown. Uh, if you are in a big city, you, you might be willing to stay not really downtown <coughs> because it's a big city, you can travel uh, uh, without uh, big problems. Uh, for example, spas, uh, it's something that we don't use in secondary locations. Okay. Uh, big conference centers uh, normally are not needed, uh, just some meeting rooms. So we tend to reduce uh, the, um, let's say, the <coughs> not revenue generated spacing uh, spaces, also because obviously the, the ADR is lower on average mm. in uh, secondary cities. The occupancy in some cases is lower in secondary city than with primary cities. So in order to have the same GOP level, we have to reduce, reduce a bit the services. Would you go for, let's say, uh, just having breakfast or would you rather or having maybe a restaurant, very small restaurant or? 
It depends again on the location. On the if uh, it's a very good location and uh, you know it's in the main square or the, the secondary city, and there are a lot of people, uh, so offices or uh, let's say business around, mm. probably we will go also for a small restaurant. Okay. Uh, if uh, we are not uh, in the main square of uh, the secondary city, we are still in a location, but not in uh, in the triple A location. Probably we will uh, we'll forget about the restaurant, we will go for a bed and breakfast with some, uh, let's say, uh, service facilities or whatever, just to give uh, a little service uh, in terms of f &B. Okay. Um, Philip, we've talked a lot um, already and the, the, the points on liquidity, I think, is a, is a, is a strong, strong point and, and exit readiness. Um, how, how is, for you, number of rooms important? Kind of like you, you've been growing, the Motel 1 seem to get bigger and bigger every time I look at it. And um, uh, is that something when you go into secondary cities where you say, or B cities, where you say, yeah, I mean, sure, the markets are all different, <coughs> but um, is that something you consider where you rather have 250 rooms instead of 100 or 150? Um, we adapt our product, our way of thinking. I mean, um, Certainly, when we are coming in a city by one million overnight, is another potential as uh, when you, to, you come to a city with 29 million uh, uh, overnight. That's why, I mean, when you come to, to Berlin, and I come back to Berlin, well, this is in every month, I mean, I had, um, uh, we, we know that it's an excellent market. We know that when we take, when we talk, take part of this market, we have to be on the best location and and we can we can go with uh, with a quite large hotel. What is a large hotel? I mean for for Essen is uh, 150 rooms quite large or 200 rooms large. Okay. For uh, for a city like um, like New York, like Paris, like uh, London, is it uh, 800 rooms large? We have in Berlin good example of, of regarding a large hotel with thousand rooms in uh, Park Inn. Mm -hmm. It works very well. You get the occupancy since many years, excellent occupancy. That's why I mean, we don't have to be uh, too short in a view. I mean, um, and we we have to adapt our decision regarding the sites uh, on the location, on the on the on the, on the premier location, and. Uh, and on the city, I mean. But you mentioned, for example, Essen. Um, is, is there, so you would say there 150 rooms is sufficient for the amount of overnight stays or of just to get a bit of a... You know, you know <coughs> efficient. I mean, we are efficient with 70 rooms. Mm -hmm. We are efficient with 500 rooms. And uh, the profitability is definitely better by 500 rooms as by 70 rooms. And that's the key of the decision. Okay. Yeah. Um, when, when, Andreas, when you look at... Um, kind of like liquidity exit readiness when you buy properties. Um, is there a threshold where you would say um, it's not interesting for you to buy it as a union? Um, or, or what are your factors considering number of rooms, for example? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, there are other factors coming mm -hmm. into the area, which is the investment volume per se, which is not so much directly mm -hmm. has to do with this factor, but we would only invest into a hotel real estate if if a uh, minimum amount of around 20 uh, million um, euros, that's due, due to the uh, strategy of the uh, funds. Um, and then we, of course, have to see um, a return if it's maybe a, let's call it a 30 million uh, deal, and then the, the, the room count which is behind would be maybe too much in, a certain, in certain markets, so we do need to see, of course, and analyze is, the, is that appropriate. So first coming from the investment volume, then we look, of course, is that opportunity um, adequate with regards to room count? In principle, we would start with 120 rooms. We, of course, in secondary cities with, um, with products we are looking at, we are not coming to that threshold, like never by far. So we, we do have to go towards the 200 mark. And that's also maybe maybe in an average quite a, quite a good size for a, for a leading hotel in a secondary city, just very globally speaking. So so from your from from your perspective, kind of like as an institutional investor, um, it's do you see challenges or do you see products which are not being 
placed um, because they're just too small in like 150, 100 rooms. Mm -hmm. is, is there, um, are there properties looking for investment? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. It's, I found out in, again, again, and again that there is, a, that, that there is um, liquidity in the market for investment starting around, let's say, 20 million euros on single asset basis, <coughs> or maybe slightly below this. That there is also um, liquidity around from particularly local investors in the area between, let's call it, roughly speaking, 5 to 10 million euro, but um, there is between. a certain gap. <laughs> And we always experience that uh, between, one may call it between 8 and 15 million, one may call it between 10 and 15 million. Um, of, there is definitely a certain gap for, uh, by, by, for certain investment investors going into this area. Mm. So that's a critical in-between size. <coughs> and that's... And that's and yeah, do so you look at um, leases and management agreements? Or? Is there a demand for both, like in terms of operational structure, you know, from your experience and from what you see okay. in the market? What you is mean the level these, of demand? These agreements and management Le yes. in secondary cities yeah. in Germany? Yes. Um, from what I've seen, I've by far, particularly in secondary cities, I would really say that the lease agreement is the dominating uh, agreement. Uh, management agreements are struggling also in primary cities. Don't believe the international, international <laughs> brands that are always pushing <coughs> this Especially thing. Especially with new management agreement is, <laughs> is uh, increasing, but this is not the case. Uh, the lease agreement is very strong, particularly in, in Germany, and is strong for the long run. And this particular counts for counts for, um, for secondary cities. So that's actually the reason why particular franchise model with IHG or Marriott and Hilton is, is the, the model of international brands that want to grow in these markets. So have a local um, operating place. And is there a lot of international um, investment demand for secondary cities in Germany or is it mostly primary locations that they look at at the moment? I don't have got the statistics, but I would suppose that... Sorry. <laughs> I, would, I would just guess that, uh, of course, um, the international liquidity now has arrived the last six months into German primary cities. They, you know, particularly the money which is coming outside of Europe, uh, this, this money is really looking for the gateway cities within Germany. So that's the current trend or the current phase we are in. It may, you, you, you may be right. Um, I, I could imagine that also German secondary cities are getting more and more interest, in, uh, more and more in the interest of the international place. I'm not, you, you may know, I, I can also ask the audience what your experience of that, but at least from my subjective point of view, uh, the big flow of, of liquidity, has, liquidity has not so much arrived within the German sector cities. Maybe in one of the other portfolio deals, yes, but not in a, not in a wide. And in terms of like pricing up between prime prime city, so if you have like commercially accepted lease and um, you know with strong like investment fundamentals, what would be the difference in your yield be between prime secondary and prime um, yeah like Location. Yeah. So, like, difference between, say, That's Munich and Hanover. I don't know. I'm looking at Peter Mauer. If I say now again, then he'll. There is definitely a gap, so um, it, it really depends. Well, that there may be, it has been declining recently. Now, um, so it's yes, yeah, it's, I, yes. it has been shrinking yes. on one side, but now if I look at the yields, for instance, in a, in a 1A location, Munich, then it's really has been dropping a lot. So maybe on, on the other side, it may be increasing, though it depends. I'm, I'm not so sure about where, where that should be. Maybe 50, maybe 75 basis points. But well, that's a very, 
very trendy um, statement, which is difficult to, to really undermine. I think, uh, thank you very much, Andreas, and thank you very much for, for bringing up um, uh, the, the question. Um, we do have a couple of operators here as well. Um, uh, Philip, um, what's your preference? Management, lease contracts, and how do you view that? I mean, uh, we have at the moment uh, roughly 25% um, in our, our <coughs> property, our, our rooms, our, our property, and uh, that's another way, I mean, to, to develop uh, to develop in a country, and um, we we love uh, uh, lease contract. <coughs> while we are ready to 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 to, to, to take risk, mm -hmm. and but we we know we know the level of risk, and um, but we are thinking about management. What is perhaps a way to develop in particular situation? And um, yes, we are thinking about uh, leases. Management. Management. No, m definitely leases is uh, is, is uh, seventy percent our mm -hmm. our uh, our business. But uh, to start with management, yeah. Do you actually own operators for properties? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which ones or how many? How many? We have roughly twenty five percent. Okay, owner operated. Yeah. Mm. Thorsten? Uh, since we're concentrating on Germany right now, we are willing to sign fixed leases and uh, rather than management. We would love to have some management contracts, but um, it's not very traditional in Germany, so we're focusing on our long-term leases. And um, we have quite the same company structure, so we have 25% our own properties, okay. and, uh, but uh, we would like to develop our company further, so um, we, would, uh, we are willing to sign more leases or rental contracts. So. What would be... Um just hypothetically, um, if, if you would lease a property, for example, in, in Essen, on, on average, a bandwidth, what, what kind of lease per month, per key, roughly? It depends uh, on the micro location. Well, look, Peter is here. <laughs> <laughs> Rent. Do you link it to EBITDA? Do, you, do your projections and sure. this is how you benchmark it? Yes? Yeah, absolutely. We're doing our own benchmark of um, first, firstly and then we look at our budget figures and uh, then we, we are very risk adjusted on this point uh, and then we are, we, we are analyzing what, what could be a, a, a local lease. What but would be typically the ratio of EBITDA you would expect uh, to the second city in Germany? Yeah, in Germany we are, we are looking at the total turnover and we are, since we are operating bed and breakfast hotels and a mid-scale product, so it's uh, roughly between 20 and 25% uh, of total turnover, yeah. Which brings us to Essen, we'll be in the region 350 up to 500. Okay. Claudia, how is uh, your growth model? More management uh, or lease contracts? Well, uh, internationally we have 23% uh, uh, of our hotels which are owned. Then we have 50% uh, under lease contract, uh, and then we have uh, roughly 30% under management contract. Mm -hmm. uh, local in Germany, uh, the story is a little different. Uh, we have probably 10% of our hotels which are owned. Then we have, uh, I think, 5% uh, under management contract, uh, and the rest is all uh, lease contracts. Hybrid leases, normally, turnover leases with uh, some uh, threshold of fixed lease. Mm -hmm. And uh, some fixed lease, but uh, the, the, the tendency that we see, uh, Andreas knows it, uh, is turnover leases with a threshold which is minimum guarantee, uh, which is giving uh, um, the yield that the investor is looking for, more or less, plus the upside uh, with the turnovers if the, the hotel is doing pretty well in terms of sales. Okay. Um, maybe be just being conscious of time. Um, it would be probably interesting to understand who, who, who is currently financing uh, the, the smaller um, kind of like products. Thorsten, do you have any experience? Is it more the local uh, Sparkasse or is it um, yeah. it's the local Sparkasse? It's the local Sparkasse, <laughs> the, the local Volksbank and some special uh, final institutions. Yeah. Um, we're willing to, as, we, as uh, Andreas pointed out, um, there's a lag between 5 to, let's say, 12 and 15 million euros. Um, and uh, therefore, we are concentrating on local banks because they know the markets um, and, uh, better than 
let's say, uh, one of the biggest bank or bigger banks, they are not willing to finance 8 million because it's too much due diligence uh, costs and so on. So um, we are focusing on the local banks. What LTV levels do you see? Uh, we'd love to see. Or what, uh, <laughs> what would you see and would you like to see? <laughs> uh, uh, roughly it's 7.75. Okay. And, uh, yeah, this uh, the normal level. Okay. And that's for ticket sizes? 5 to 10. Okay. Andreas, what do you experience on the bigger tickets, maybe? Uh, well, to be open, we don't leverage in Germany. So okay. We do equity only. Okay. There is no, oh, there, there is no leverage. I only <laughs> experienced that uh, there is um, many, many more banks who are who are granting uh, specialized hotel uh, lending. Um, not only the uh, the very long-term experience, but like such as Ariel Bank, for instance, but also local. More and more local banks are. Um, are going into that direction and building up also a lot of expertise. So um, many more um, uh, players in the market. And at the end of the day, the, the better availability of course of lending, I must admit, of course, is putting pressure on the yields at the end of the day, as there, there is all in all uh, more money in the market. What's your experience, Philip? <laughs> I mean, the difficulties today, I mean, for, for 20 years, was the finance is the difficulties. Today is the difficulty to find the right place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been, we have done our focus on, on, on one point, it's, uh, and uh, that's, 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 that's probably for everybody the same, yeah. the same uh, difficulties. Is, uh, today is, is really, money is here, mm -hmm. so, yeah? And uh, when, you, when you bring some good result, it's not a problem. Um, to find the right location in the right city, it's not so easy. So it's mainly basically finding location, not the money? Yeah. OK. Do you experience? I mean, for us. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, how, um, how is it well, for an we, we have the same impression, actually. I'm a bit scared because uh, I remember uh, 2006 and 2007 what was happening. And we, are, in my opinion, we are about to go into that direction because actually right now we are pressed almost every day by banks to find opportunities and to, to get more debt and whatever. The same banks that uh, in 2009 <laughs> told us you have too much debt. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's a kind of difficult right now. I think <coughs> everybody's looking at, uh, right now we are going to tertiary location because primary location, it's almost impossible to find anything because prices have skyrocketed. Secondary location are very difficult, uh, so we, everybody is looking at ter tertiary location now. And when you look at tertiary location, actually you are about to collapse because <laughs> the, the banking system uh, is, has too much money and uh, we don't know what is going to happen. My, that's my uh, personal impression based on uh, also in, the, in this conference. Almost all the funds have a lot of money to invest and they are looking for opportunities. So the yields are shrinking, as Andreas was saying. And when the yields are shrinking and the money is for free, almost for free, everybody's willing to sign uh, these, these contracts with uh, incredible numbers that uh, as the cycle is going to change again and will change, uh, are totally not sustainable. So let's see what is going to happen. It's, uh, it's uh, very interesting. Well, what yields is, I think, a very good, good topic to, to touch at the end. Um, what kind of like um, initial yields do you, do you see, Torsten? When since we're not investors, I can <coughs> say, but rumors. Rumors. Depends on the operator. It depends on the deal size. Um, okay. But six, six and a half. What we heard when we have a good operator um, in place with the long-term leases. Maybe this is uh, the, the average figure right now, but um, okay. actually when we talk secondary cities, um, there are some things on the market um, that's a, l a little bit above six and a half. Okay. Philip? Is that? Yeah. It's in that range? Yeah, in the range. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, that uh, brings us a little to the, to the end before we maybe um, open the um, questions to the floor again. Um, we wanted to uh, touch the, the myth again and um, maybe ask um, uh, each one of you um, a little on, um, uh, and, and I would love if you could answer with true or false and not uh, kind of like it depends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so um, primary city products uh, do not work in city 
secondary cities or B cities. Um, Philip. Definitely, definitely the, the product works in primary city and the secondary city okay. and tertiary city. Okay. Claudio? Uh, actually, I agree with Philip. It's, okay. uh, it's the same for us. What should you say, no? <laughs> <laughs> um, second one, a lack of profitability makes secondary cities too risky. <coughs> Thorsten? Uh, false. Uh, as we said uh, before, we, we kind of see it from our perspective. Okay. Claudio? But from a profitability point of view, actually, it's false. Okay. Our experience is, you know, secondary city and primary cities, in terms of GOP level, more or less are alike. Pretty the same, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. um, third one, uh, secondary cities are not liquid enough. You cannot sell your product. Andreas. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> we eliminate it depends, uh, but you can uh, for a product which is more than twenty million. Well, that, that is that is false. Okay. If, I, if I if I may really structure it the way I would like to have, that is false because I have got a great uh, great Motor One or IHG Holiday Inn Express uh, two hundred two hundred fifty rooms in a in a uh, micro one a micro, micro location. Of secondary city, so that 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 would be false. Philip, with with the Germans, you never get problems. I mean, it's always liquid. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, first one: secondary cities are too small for institutional money. We heard already, Andreas. Um, uh, he is. Um, he's looking into secondary cities, so he's institutional money. So I, I think, obviously, we've uh, looked at that. Thorsten, what do you think? Uh, according to Andreas, that's uh, <laughs> kind of true. Yeah, that's um, it's it's um, depends on the deal sizes, and okay. we cannot see 250 keys in Essen, for example. And that's why I, I think it's too small for institutional money. Yeah. Okay. So it depends on the on the contract that uh, you are sure. ready to sign. <laughs> <laughs> because Andreas he didn't mention actually the kind of contract that he would like to have in secondary cities. <laughs> <laughs> And, sure. the, and the guarantees that you would like to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we, we think that uh, professional, institutional, I mean, and, and, and national institutional, no better as, as a foreign institution, the market, and they can appreciate it better the, the, the location, the city, and the, the value. Okay. So, um, last one. Um, only lack of options in primary markets push players into secondary cities. So um, are we just going, going to the B cities because we don't find anything in the big seven, for example? Um, Andreas, what do you think? It depends. Again, yeah, it really, it really is, is coming down to the investor's appetite, you know, what, about the size, about the yields are looking for. So there, are, there is definitely. Um, some best to sticking to the primary cities, you know, our big open ended funds, so they are really going for big cities and the big tickets, and it wouldn't change that strategy. Nevertheless, on the other, on the other side, institutional, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, institutional investors <coughs> around, they, they may also go into the region where they may also have their base, where they understand the product and, and the market. So, um, so I would say that we, that we don't want to get pushed somewhere. We, we structure the deal according to our our final investors' requirements. So, Philip, we are primary hotel operator. That means our choice is to be there what our customer is, and is only not only in the primary city and secondary city, but it has a city also. That's why this is our decision is to go, not only regarding the the, the real estate market. Primary. So you would say fault. Sorry? False? I mean, we, 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 go, we go in, 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 in any in any cities. Okay. Yeah, when it's the market. All right. That brings us to the end um, of, of our session. Um, thank you very much um, uh, for everyone to participate. Um, maybe you want to say something? No, the next, the next session is Tertia Cities. The next, yeah. one, the next one is going to be C <laughs> Cities. Um, and we've discussed a lot about if we should have made it international and not Germany as well. So maybe next time it's going to be international. Um, or, or just <laughs> Stuttgart. <laughs> um, uh, anyone has um, some questions? Um, 
may, maybe benefit of the expertise here. Otherwise, um, uh, I want to say thank you to every one of uh, you and um, for participating. I think it was um, uh, very insightful. And um, let's see um, how the situations unfold this year. I think it's going to be an exciting year, I think. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you.